Hi, Peter Charles here, folks, for Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to do something backwards, basically. Backwards to what I usually do. If I'm going to create a new type of fly, or I, oh, I shouldn't say a new type of fly, uh, a fly with a new wrinkle, um, or modify some tech, technique, casting technique, fishing technique, whatever it is, uh, my normal process is to, to do all of that, go out, try it, fish it, see if it works, make some tweaks, and then start producing videos on it afterwards. And so you see the finished product. In this case, I'm going to show uh, a development that I'm starting from scratch. I have no idea if it's going to work. It just sounds like a good idea. So we're going to go through that process. And, uh, and so, you know, you'll see the beginnings of it, how I approach the thinking of it, and then eventually we'll end up on the water and we'll try it. And maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. We'll find out. It might go through a few tweaks. But it's kind of fun to see the evolution of an idea. And uh, what I'm doing here, it has applications to other fishing. So, I mean, you might turn around and go, okay, fine, I'll try that someplace else in a different way. You know, you never know how it, these things spin off into uh, other techniques, other methods, and, you know, and become effective. So... Here's the problem, and I, it's important with these things is to always define the problem. And uh, we're all familiar with laser ring lift, right? Well, how do we get the laser ring lift to work as a presentation method rather than just something that happens at the end of our nymphing drift? And the reason why this is an issue is that, and I'm sure other people have found the same thing, you get a lot of hits when your nymph or wet fly goes from a dead drift to it starts to move and it's dead drifting along and all of a sudden it starts to go uh, up and maybe to the side and a fish whacks it. Happens all of the time. As soon as that nymph or the wet fly goes from dead drift to moving, the fish hits it. We get the same thing in steelheading. You make a cross stream presentation, you make an upstream mend, dead drift it for a bit so you can sink it, start to bring it under tension so it begins to move and lift a bit and bam, the fish hits. So it's that initial movement that catches their attention and makes them react to it. Now, there is something that happens during a mayfly hatch that is very interesting on why the lies ring lift was initially developed. And this happens uh, when a mayfly is ready to uh, molt and turn into an, a subadult. And they're sitting at the bottom, their uh, skin's filled with gas, and they can't cling to the bottom anymore. They float to the top. And they don't want to be there. They want to be back down the rock. So they swim back down. Then they float up. They swim back, back down. They float up and so on. So you get this up and down motion. Now, there are some videos on YouTube uh, that sh actually show this uh, underwater actually happening. It's more of a still water situation rather than a moving water situation, but it's the same thing. And uh, look at Mayfly Life Cycle if you want to uh, go search them. I'm not going to stick them up here. i would be swiping their copyright, so I'm not going to do that. But you can research them, look at them, Mayfly life cycle. You'll see underwater footage of exactly this up-down behavior. Now, in, in a, a river, we've got moving water, right? So our insect comes up here, but it doesn't go straight up. It goes up at an angle downstream because it's being carried by the current. Gets to the top, swims down, goes back up swims down. So we've got this zigzag going on as opposed to straight up and down. We visualize it as straight up and down, but in moving water, it's a zigzag. So how do we get a presentation that's going to work that can actually, you know, detect a strike, catch fish, and replicate that zigzag up-down motion of a nymph, mayfly nymph, as it goes to the surface and goes back down again? So I began working on two things, a, a leader type and a presentation type. So we're going to talk about the leader right now, and then uh, later on we'll get out on the water and we'll look at the presentation. Uh, we'll also look at the types of flies we might want to use, and flashback uh, nymphs are the obvious choice with a bit of weight. A bead, you need the weight to get it back down again. So you're looking at a bead on a flashback nymph would be very typical. So I've made myself a little rig here. Here's my fly. doesn't look very much like a fly, but it'll have to do. This is my fluorocarbon tippet, and that's important, fluorocarbon. It's denser. You've seen my other videos on fluorocarbon. It's denser than uh, nylon monofilament. 
so it sinks an awful lot better. It will not hold the nymph up. Then where we get the joint between our mono uh, nylon and our monofilament fluorocarbon, we put a float, an inline float. You can see this is the line goes through it. You don't want one of those floats that sit on top. It has to be an inline float and small. And I'll show you a, a, a video later on of constructing the leader. So this is just the general concept. So now we have our little inline float, and this is nylon, thick nylon. And nylon has specific gravity close to that of water, just slightly denser. So this will sit in surface film, which is exactly what we want. So this is the leader system, thick mono, an inline indicator of some description, could be strike putty, something small. You're, you don't, you're, you're not trying to use this like a classic indicator where it's, you know, dead drifting and holding everything up. You just want something that's going to help create a hinge point. So we've got the mono running off like this, and then we've got the fluorocarbon heading down. So all you're doing is using this float uh, as a means of creating this hinge or this angle. So you've got mono fluorocarbon down to the nymph. And so what happens is this is at the surface, right? You've made your cast, your fly sinks, and then once it gets down, you make a pull, it comes back up, and then you stop and it goes down, and then you strip again. So it's a series of strip, weight, strip, weight, strip, weight. And as a consequence, the fly is going to be going in that zigzag motion because as you pull on the line, the fly is down here, and as you pull, the fly goes up. And then as soon as you stop pulling, now it's dead drifting in the current, it'll sink. So that's the idea behind this leader system. In the next video, we'll actually build one. And then we will uh, actually go out and fish one. And we'll also take a look at some nymphs as well. So stay tuned to the next one. <laughs>